Now I'd like to welcome everyone to the June 28th planning and zoning meeting. Uh, we are starting with a continuation of a public hearing. Gauthier, 6 Cindy Lane, revised application under section 830G of the Connecticut State Center Affordable Housing, nine units. And we have with us, who would like to start? I'll introduce for a minute, it's Neil Marcus, Code Wolf PC on behalf <coughs> of the applicant. When we adjourned on the 14th, we went back to the drawing board with respect to the existing three family house. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of comments about it's one of the ugliest houses in the neighborhood. And again, my clients didn't build that house and they bought it and they are willing to try to improve it. And again, as we went back, the original plan talked about putting a second story on it, which would significantly change its appearance, but would make more of a mass and a larger uh, structure uh, in that place. So what you see on the board here is the renovation, the, 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 the revision, I should say, of the two family units on the left side that we talked about at the last meeting. And then on the right side, we focused on some of the changes that can be made to the existing three family. And the proposal there is to, it's completely aesthetic. I mean, it's basically uh, take the property, landscape it, fix the sidewalks, fix the staircases and the porches, put some shutters on it and paint it and reside it in a way that will improve its appearance. It's still a three family house. It, uh, and we just couldn't see any justification, quite honestly, to reducing it to a two family. Uh, the, the units are a good size as they are currently configured. One of the units has been upgraded and the other two will be upgraded. So the plan is that uh, we're gonna ask the commission to take a look at the new, uh, the new facades, the exterior design, and if that is resolves the problem with that structure, we would make that a condition of approval, obviously, that the building will be renovated as proposed. Um, Steve, you might want to talk, Steve Triggis is on my left, and you might want to talk a little bit about any other changes that you made uh, subsequent to the last meeting. No, uh, Steve Trinkus, for the record, professional engineer from Southbury. The only change we made is what uh, my client put together. Um, originally, on the first plan, we had a new walkway being right adjacent to the existing steps, so where we had the paved walk. So what uh, Val Gauthier did was, you know, she showed the walkway farther out, so we've set it out eight feet from the front of the house. So we'll have the paver walkway with individual, um, uh, you know, walks to each uh, door and that allowed us to put landscaping in on either side of the <clears throat> you know front doors there's also shutters proposed for all the windows right now none of the windows have shutters on them there's also ac units under the larger windows which you know they're the wall units that stick out so the landscaping that will be pushed uh, placed opposite the ac units will be high enough not to block them but to block the view of them um, from that so the, you know you'll have you know you know a green space right in front of the unit you'll have a new paver walkway um, with this you know, walkways to the house you know the siding will be uh, you know either painted or matched to whatever we do with the new building uh, when those get constructed so it's all a comprehensive you know plan um, as far as that goes and it, it does improve it a lot these are uh, these the larger windows here are kind of more like the old style casement windows, which are just, they're big rectangles. You know, they're not double hung windows. The new windows. You know, yeah, well, the existing windows, you know, are just these large picture windows, which they put in years ago. They're not double hung, which are on the new unit, but, you know, with putting the shutters on them and, you know, the landscaping in front of them, you know, will improve the visual appearance of that building with the new walkway. Um, you know, we are, we didn't change any of the landscaping proposed. 
around all the other units that was on the uh, plan we presented a couple weeks ago. So this was the only change that we made to the plans. I'm going to just, if it's, I don't have any, many copies of this, but if it's any help, I'll pass this around real quick. This is a, a picture of what's there now with the air conditioning sticking out of the windows as you described. This is a picture, obviously, up there of what we plan to do. And here's a picture of the two that are side by side. And, uh, you know, I'll, just, I'll look that up. I, unfortunately, I only brought one copy. But um, the... The changes, you know, I, I can't tell you that they're <clears throat> dramatic in the sense that we're significantly um, <clears throat> renovating the, the size or the shape of the building, but they are significant in terms of changing what this property is going to look like driving down the street. I mean, I will tell you that, again, under affordable housing, you know, aesthetics are not usually consideration. Um, the we don't we, we often hear about the fact that affordable housing is out of character with the neighborhood because you'll take single family homes and you'll add multifamily units into a single family neighborhood. That's what affordable housing allows. In this case, I went back to the client and I said that if we've gone a long distance in meeting the right. The, the reasons in addressing the reasons for the denial of the original uh, 13 units, we've cut it down, we've changed the, the layout, we've changed the look. And at this point, I said, if we could just do something with the three family, maybe we can resolve this thing to everybody's satisfaction. This is a compromise. The very definition of a compromise is that everybody walks away unhappy. If everybody's <laughs> happy, then it's not really a good compromise. But uh, it is a compromise. My client's not extremely happy about losing the extra units. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we live in the same communities and we have to deal with certain concerns. I think he's addressed them. Uh, clearly on any of the substantive issues, uh, how we were tr treating uh, 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 refuse and closures and collection of, of garbage. We've addressed all those. Uh, we've reduced the density and now he's willing to spend the money to try to improve the appearance of the building that seems to be the focus of most people's concerns. But I don't think we're going to go any farther. I mean, that, that's uh, as far as, as the applicant's willing to go. As I say, unfortunately, if we can't compromise it under the act, then we go back to asking the court to determine whether the grounds for the first denial were uh, sustainable as in the best interest of public health and safety, considering that therefore rejecting the amendments that have been submitted to address those concerns. So we're addressing the concerns as if they're legitimate. If we were in court, we're going to obviously say that we are not in agreement with the legitimacy. We think that the act over overcomes the decision. But I'm going to encourage you to, you know, give some consideration to adopting this modification and approving it. I think it's in the best interest of everybody that's involved, including the neighbors uh, who have stated their concerns uh, and again the last concern we heard was this three families just ugly it's out of place in the neighborhood from day one we're going to try to make it conform a little bit more to what the standards of the neighborhood are so that's what you got um we'll answer any questions but at the risk of saying that we've spoken about this too much i think we've answered a lot of the questions previously and discussed the issues to to great length so that's what we have thank you thank you thank you, thank you. okay uh, would anyone in the public like to speak yeah I, name and address south esposito 41 maple avenue bethel i'm sorry i missed the beginning 
what is the last proposal here? This one, the keeping the three unit building, which is here, three new duplexes, which are all a single story duplex. They're not two story. There's, you know, center garages and, you know, basically, you know, it's no higher than a single family house. So that's the proposal. So it's nine units instead of 13. You want to talk a little bit to that, Tim, because I didn't see the upgrade of the building. Well, and then this, this picture here is the upgrade to the existing building where a new paver walkway will be put in about eight feet out in front of the wall with walkways going to each unit with additional landscaping to hide the AC units for one under the big windows, but also putting shutters on all of the windows, you know, because right now there are none and also matching the color of this with the ultimate color of, you know, the new units when they're built. On the new units, what kind, what kind of siding is going on there? I, I would imagine today it's probably, you know, a, a vinyl type of siding. So that's what a lot, of, a lot of builders are using that. And they, what, are you going to do it to the old? Well, that's actually got, that's got that. I mean, it needs a good washing, quite honestly, but we don't know what the colors are going to be for these down the road. These are, with the price of the materials now, they're unlikely to be built in the near future simply because the cost of construction is from the roof. So now you still think you have enough room in that other corner of the lot there to put a, put a unit? Yeah, yeah. I asked last time, couldn't answer the question, what size piece of property is that? Being the entire to? property is nine tenths of an acre. So it's- What, the, the small? Well, the entire parcel is- well, I'm talking about the corner one. Well, it, it fits because under 8-30G, we can we don't have to follow the zoning setback. So, but could you give him the square footage? Is what I think you want. Uh, it's probably. Um, are, you, are you asking about the side yard distance? No, so just basically kind of the area, David, over there. Where um, the house is going to be put on that little tiny corner there. The reason it's, I'm questioning. The reason I'm questioning you. It looks like on the map here, it's 10 feet from the corner of the property line. The area, the, the area, if you drew a line here, this area is probably 10 to 12,000 square feet. Roughly a quarter acre. It is a quarter acre. Oh, roughly. Roughly a quarter roughly. acre. Yeah. yeah. The only reason I'm questioning it, because I know, I know it's different laws now, but it was denied back uh, when, when Mr. Ianelli, which the original owner of the three family, try to put a house there and he was denied it through the town because there wasn't enough property. And then he turned around to try to buy a piece of profit from Mrs. Kurtz, which is the one that's adjoining. Right. And she wouldn't sell it. So he was denied any, uh, any building on that piece of property. And I know there's a pipe that runs through there. Yeah. The, dra yeah, the drainage pipe is right here. We're not, is the house going over it or Not the, a, nope. part, or the nope. driveway going over it? Nope. Nothing's going over nope. it? Because right, I know yeah. she has one on her side. Yeah. yeah. No, nothing. She couldn't nothing fill anything over. near it because the town owns the rights to get into that pipe. Yeah. Hmm. Everything is outside the easement area, so the town can they go, can go there to and do, without what, any... do whatever they want. We're not impinging their easement. I just, I just felt like you were kind of like shoving a lot in that, that corner. I, I mean, your, your comment last time I was here is you didn't put the driveway in front of it because the car would stick out. There wasn't enough room to put a driveway in front of it. It was also, so, so I felt that it, uh, it was also a different footprint. It was a two story, two family. This being a single story does have a bigger footprint, but because it's got the garages, that's why two spaces are in the garages and I have the little driveway on the side to have the two spaces outside. So we have two spaces per unit. I don't like it, but it is, you know, I know where you're at. I know where you would be going if this doesn't go through. So whatever, up to the committee at this point, what they want to do, I mean, I. You know, I know people back there in City Lane don't like it either, but I know progress has to be progress. And I know with this ordinance yeah. that you use, it just, it's just an ordinance to get what you want, basically is what it is. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone online who'd like to speak at this time, David? Um, 
I don't see any raised hands at the moment, Madam Chair. But is that um, is that a hand right there? That's okay. just that's uh, that's, oh, that's the, the cursor. Icon? That's the cursor. Uh, that's the cursor. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's just the cursor. <laughs> uh, for, for anyone that wants to offer public comments in the instance that you have never participated in one of our meetings before. You would bring your cursor to the reactions icon in the toolbar at the bottom of the Zoom app. Clicking on that button uh, will uh, um, display a button for you to raise your hand. Raising your hand lets us know if you are muted, um, that you have a comment that you want to offer. Just as a reminder again, for anyone that is attending this meeting remotely, if you could identify yourself with your full name, Thank you very much. I'm seeing uh, two persons, uh, the first of which is a James Kellerman. Yeah, my name is James Kellerman. I live at 19 Cindy Lane. And um, yes, I would agree with the uh, gentleman who just spoke and uh, mentioned that, yes, this is the lesser of the evils as far as the look goes. But I still think you're trying to cram, you know, 10 pounds of stuff into a five pound bag. And I don't care how you dress it up. I think it's going to look like a mess. The other concern and my biggest concern and has been my biggest concern from the very beginning of this is that you're taking three units. Now you're going to tack on nine more. And now you are adding a significant amount of foot traffic. And we've talked about the water drain off and there's been talk about all this different stuff, but the foot traffic and the driving traffic that's going to be coming up and down Cindy Lane and I'm telling you, when you drive, I don't care who measured what, I'm telling you, when you drive down Cindy Lane and there is a car, one single car parked on the street, two cars cannot pass. One car has to pull over, the other car has to come down, and the next car goes around just for <clears throat> safety purposes in that incident. incident. So now you're going to add people who are coming to visit and you know, you've got that one place that is right up against the street there, and I don't care if you've got 10 feet of clearance, you know, people aren't parking very well. And you can actually see that at the beginning of the street right now, because there's several teenagers or several young people, I apologize, that are living up on the corner. And when they have one friend, because there's five of them, they have one friend over, their car is parked in the street. And when their car is parked in the street, it creates a hazard just driving, driving in and out of Cindy Lane. It is difficult to do. We have a challenge when we're taking our kids to the bus. If that car is parked there, and that's just one car. And now you're talking about adding nine more units on that street from what is already there. And that is my biggest concern. Thank you. Go ahead, Patty. my wife. Um, hi, uh, Patty's trying to say something, Patty Oaks, and I'm not sure if she can find the little razor thing. Oh, she's she trying, I can't. Oh, you did it, you got it. Oh, great. Thank you. Is it my turn? Yes. Can you name and address? Uh, Patricia Oak, 16 Cindy Lane, Bethel, Connecticut. Thank you. Uh, my question has been raised with my husband multiple times since the first meetings. We want to know the name of the excavation company or the company that did the core samples for the ground and dug 10 feet down. We want to see the report. We've asked for multiple times that it would, and we were promised that it would be submitted can we see that? Steve, do you want to answer that? I'll answer it. It was submitted with the original application. The test hole results were either on the plan but or did in you the stone water. Can we, I, 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 I've not seen hole. a copy. I dug the test hole oh, with a local oh, excavator. Did you tell Mrs. Oaks? Uh, oh, groundworks. I'm so sorry. What did you say? Ground, groundworks was the excavating contractor that dug the holes under my supervision. Stamford Groundworks, and the report is where? It was submitted as part of the original application, the 13-unit plan. Okay, so Commission, do you have a copy of that plan that we can see? Uh, I'm sure they do, yes. The results, where are the results? Yeah. That the ground is Bethel Sand and Gravel. The, the, uh, the documents should be all in the Google Drives that we have for um this public hearing process i'm okay. not sure not, not one resident of cindy lane can locate that so if you would be kind enough to um let us see that we are 
um, concerned about the discussion that we are on Bethel sand and gravel land. And we know in fact that we, this was wetlands and there is not a um, very, um, what has been claimed as a drainable property here on this whole development back in the day. So we've asked for it multiple times from day one. We still don't see it. We cannot find it. We've asked for it. We bring it up at every single meeting and still nothing is being uh, revealed or submitted or emailed. Let us review it and take a look and make sure just that we are vetting out that this flooding potential that currently exists is not exacerbated by this initiative. I, I will say to, to that point, the, so the documents are always available. The, the public record is always available in the land use department. We have also had an engineering review that was, re, that was performed by our consulting engineers. Uh, I believe Barry Parfin and Joseph Hausman at Wright Pierce Engineering. So there- and What is their opinion? Can you read it to me? Uh, I, I'm not sure as to, as, uh, as to which, um, which iteration of their response comments uh, would address that off the cuff. Um, but like I said, it's, it's all part of the public record for this application. So then it is available online? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's available online and it's also available in the land use department. Every document that we receive, there's a hard copy version of it. Okay, um, well, we're having difficulty finding it and no one can speak to the results of that, those tests? I can speak to the results as I dug them as a professional engineer and we hit sand and gravel. On this site, we hit sand and gravel. I can't speak for any other property on Cindy Lane, but on this site, we hit sand and gravel or sandy loam soil. We did not hit anything that was close to what a wetland soil would be. And Barry had, Wright Pierce had one review letter. We responded to it, uh, addressed all of their comments. To my knowledge, there was no subsequent letter from Barry. So I think there was just one. And can, are we, can we get a copy of the design? It's all on, as David said, it's all in the record. It was all part of the 13 unit record. Wright and Pierce is still online. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. The, 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 uh, the engineering report that Wright and Pierce came uh, put up for this. Yeah, all, all of the documents oh, they're all, they're are, they're, they're all still online. Those, they're, they're once on. those documents are posted online, they're not removed. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll continue our research as residents of Cindy Lane who are having difficulty locating that specific. Look under Wright and Pierce. Yeah. We can dive into it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, if, if you would like, uh, if, if you're available tomorrow, um, staff would be happy to walk you through where to find these documents online, uh, or, or if it is convenient for you, those can be emailed to you. But either way, they are part of the public record. They have been available since day one when those reports were submitted to us. Okay, excellent. We've never gotten that answer and none of us can locate it. So that would be great. If you could email that to me, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia. Okay, uh, I think Chrissy, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, next, uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, uh, Chrissy Arditi. Arditi? Hi, Chrissy Arditi, 21 Cindy Lane. Thank you. Um, my, still my concern is gonna be the traffic and parking and especially at the end of the street, just like um, James had stated, we have a hard time if one person has a visitor. So. Um, if there is any way to like review and see if there's any place to put some additional parking. And again, um, as I've stated in other meetings, we have already Bethel PD on speed dial due to speeders. I would like to ask, and I, um, I'm gonna speak as every other parent, I'm gonna represent every other parent um, I would love for you guys to back us with the town and the police commission or whoever else we have to contact about getting speed bumps installed um, throughout the street because we have issues. And now I know it was stated um, last meeting that 
you know, we're not going to have extra traffic because the garbage man comes down the street already. It was, it was a snarky way of putting us, our, our fears down. Um, if you have children, you, you don't want cars speeding down the street. Um, even if you don't have children, if you have nieces, nephews, you know, people that have, that you like that have kids, speeding cars are an issue. Um, so maybe you guys could back us to try and help get speed bumps installed on the street to slow down, to beat that potential risk before it happens. Have you been to the police commission, may I ask? Um, I personally haven't. I know it has in the, uh, people have in the past and we were shot down. No. Um, but it's, it, I mean, the speeding, I can, I could send videos and it's oh, okay. out of control. I, this is like, you know, already happening before adding other, any other people. Right. Um, so it's a huge concern for all of us. We've stated this. So maybe you guys could back us and, and help us try and get speed bumps. Thank you. Uh, do you, do you want to be gentlemen like to? I just on the on the issue of the existing traffic conditions on Cindy Lane. Again, for the record, Neil Marcus. This uh, early on in my first affordable housing application in the town of Richfield, which goes back to the year after the act was passed. We had that issue with Ivy Hill in in Richfield, and uh, my client was proposing seven units of affordable housing. Here we're doing nine on Ivy Hill Road and about 250 neighbors came out and every one of them spoke about the horrendous condition of Ivy Hill Road. It was narrow. It had all sorts of car accidents. Nobody was maintaining it. And the, the judge who reviewed the denial on that issue, Marshall Berger, by the way, is officially retired from the bench as of the day after tomorrow. But Judge Berger in an early decision on affordable housing wrote on that issue that the obligation to maintain the roads in the town of Richfield and how much different Bethel resides with the Board of Selectmen. And to the extent that all the neighbors who have identified a problem, they're misdirected to take them to the Planning and Zoning Commission. They, meet, they need to take it to the Board of Selectmen because the applicant whose property is completely empty at that point hasn't contributed to those problems at all. And it is not charged with any responsibility of correcting the problem that the applicant in that case didn't contribute to. That logic still applies today, that the Gautiers now own a three family house here. And uh, the, you know, there's no suggestion that, that they've created this problem of speeding or parking. So we will, I will suggest that we have no objection to speed bumps. We have no control over that. Speed bumps can be very helpful in the town uh, crew that plows the roads usually hates them. So speed bumps are used uh, sparingly in all the towns. But if speed bumps, if, if, if the neighbors are saying, will this applicant join in a request for speed bumps? The answer is yes. Will this applicant join in a request to post the property, post the street, no parking? The answer is yes. We will help as we can, but we didn't create the problem and we're not gonna solve the problem. And you guys, quite honestly, you're not gonna solve it either. It's in front of the wrong commission. And the, the answer here is to go either to the police commission, the chief and the board of selectmen and explain the problems of Cindy Lane. But this application, by the way, the only other thing I'll say is that everybody thinks we're adding nine additional housing units. We're gonna have a total of nine, three exist, we're adding six. Originally, the proposal was to add um, nine units, excuse me, we're going, how much are we? 10, 10, we're adding 10. Oh, we're, we ended up at 13 on the original proposal, three existing, 10 were gonna be new, and we've cut that 10 down to six for a total of nine. And I know that the numbers sometimes get thrown around and people don't remember exactly what we're doing, but that's what we're doing. 
And on the issue of traffic, as I say, there's a long history of why this commission has limited uh, ability to deal with it. And I say that more than not only for the commission, but for the neighbors who have brought it up. If it's a problem now, it'll be a problem tomorrow whether this project gets built or not. Address it with the right commission. And to the comment about creating additional traffic, it is to answer the concerns that were raised about additional traffic. <clears throat> Clearly, the people who move into the six new units will create a small amount of traffic. Clearly. But the idea that we're going to create a lot of other traffic that, you know, more FedEx trucks are going to come down the street, more UPS trucks are coming down, more oil trucks, more garbage trucks. The answer is this is a well established neighborhood, and all those trucks servicing the neighborhood are there now. And the traffic experts will tell you that we will not, six new units have a significant increase be an increase, but it won't be significant. So on the issue of traffic, and, and by the way, on the original application, traffic was not a concern that resulted in a denial. We haven't addressed it here. We're addressing the reasons for the denial. We, we were, if traffic was addressed satisfactorily in the original application, the amended application doesn't really have to go back into it. So that's all I can tell you on traffic, which is we will join as the applicant will join the neighbors in trying to improve the conditions on Sydney Lane with respect to the proper authorities to do that. Thanks. Okay, is there anyone else who has a question? And from the public. Oh, it's CJ Liberty and Grand Street. Um, this is just a minor comment. It seemed to me that in previous meetings, um, when what's your address, DJ? I'm sorry. Pardon? Your address? Eight Grand Street. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when it was discussed about eliminating the uh, <coughs> trash pad, the uh -huh. garbage pad, it was going to be individual units having their own individual garbage. It occurs to me that if traffic uh, and garbage trucks are going to be an issue, wouldn't it be better to have a consistent garbage hauler? In other words, the landlord would provide the garbage so that there's only one garbage truck coming in and not a garbage truck for each, you know, different units have different garbage haulers. Just, just, it's just a thought. Yeah. Steve Trunks, the record in this case, <laughs> I'm not sure which company currently services the three units, but the landlord would, it's all one parcel. So he would keep that because oh, so? these are rentals. So he would be keeping okay. that infrastructure. So you okay. wouldn't have four different hauling companies. You'd okay. have one that would come in one day a week and then pick up from all four houses. I understood it, that each unit was going to be responsible. Yeah. For their well, they're going to have their own garbage can, but the, the, uh, garbage truck picking it up is turned by the landlord for the entire complex. Okay, thank you. Okay, commission members. I have one more question. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Or gentlemen, and yeah, you said you- Just identify the, yourself one more time. Sal Esposito. Thank you, Sal. You said you dug holes? Yes. Did you hit any water at all? Maybe right at the bottom of the test pit, like 10 foot down. Nothing How far? about 10 foot down. All right, because nothing, nothing above that. It was because all I have a pool, and right now I'm in the process of having to get a new liner because there's groundwater under there and it's undermining the liner. It's at eight foot and it's at four foot. Now, at four foot, for some reason, it's worse all of a sudden this year. I know we had a lot of rain in the beginning of the season but it undermined it because it is sand. Well, you likely would have in sand and gravel areas, this was very true where Bethel sand and gravel was, uh, anybody ever saw the bank itself, you get layers of very coarse material and you get layers of effectively what's called dead sand. It's very, very fine sand with silt and clay and it's very impermeable to water. 
So you could have a layer of that, which would perch the water above it. And then you could have well-drained material below it also. In this case, we didn't hit any well, restrictive- Well, I, I know so. for a fact there's water underneath there. Yeah, we didn't hit any- I know, for, I know for a fact, because this is so. the second liner I'm putting in. <clears throat> seems to be a little worse now than it was 13 years ago when I had that liner put in. <clears throat> so there's definitely water down there. Was it? There is no water. Whether it's going to affect you, I don't, I don't know, but I know there's water down there. These are slap on grade, you know, with just a little crawl space from mechanical. So we're only going four foot down. Yeah. It's not it. even a you full base. You may not. Well, you know, on the like I say, I'm not that far away from it. Yeah. So it depends. It changes a lot on the site. Yeah. And, you know, as far as the cars there, maybe you could put no parking on one side of the street. Or something, to, you know, so that the cars aren't uh, parking on the country and they have more room. Well, that's a just a suggestion. The board select selectmen on that just point. A suggestion. And is there anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Kitty, I do have a few little things to mention when you're done with the public. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I think we're done with the public. I'll wait for the commission members. Okay, go ahead, Deb. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Um, the um, At the last meeting, one of the commission members asked to ask the building official if building permits were needed for uh, removing walls and roofs and things like that. Um, just note for the record that I spoke to the building official and he said yes. Um, the second part is that, Neil, could you do go over with the commission one more time the um the uh affordable components where where they're going to be located and um in what units and stuff and if you hear music in the background i, I, I do you know who i would call about the noise ordinance for the town of bethel <laughs> i have <laughs> there's nothing like being out sick and listening to a band practicing in my next door neighbor's backyard, but I'll take care of that. Uh, that's the of the police department. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Nancy. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> also, also, I just want to let the general public know <laughs> that with the um, this will require another engineering review. Um, this is what we're dealing working with now is a conceptual drawing and it will have to go through engineering one more time. Um, and to the commission with all the discussion of um, safety and kids and traffic and things of that nature, if you were ever to consider um, going with this, please excuse, I'm having trouble talking, um, that I think a consideration should be made to include sidewalks on this property, um, the total length of the property close to the road. And that's, that, sorry guys, that's all I can say right now. That's on, on the answer, it's Neil uh, Marcus for the record. Uh, uh, the answer is we had, we're going to propose that we set aside a one bedroom unit as affordable and two two bedroom units as affordable and we will be open to where we want to place those the one bedroom would be in the three family in the two bedrooms uh, again uh, we'd be open to where those will be designated. Again, we had a problem of not wanting to remove some of the existing tenants until their leases are up. Uh, Steve, do you recall? Yeah, I, that's Steve Trank is just a follow up. What yeah. we were gonna do is at the current time, the existing three unit building would be the affordable units. They're all affordable. The, the one bedroom uh, would be an affordable, I think at 80%. One two bedroom would be at 80%. One the other two bedroom at 60% be, as the other two two bedrooms are both occupied. One lady is in her 90s. When 
she vacates that that unit can be renovated, then one of the new two bedrooms will be set aside as the 80% affordable. Right. And you know, you'll have a 60% affordable two bedroom in the existing building with a two bedroom market rate in the existing building. Yeah, our, th our theory was we didn't want to displace the current tenants if we didn't have. To. And they, by the way, all, to our knowledge, qualify. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice concept, gentlemen, but in the original application, they were being displaced. Oh, yeah. Right. The original application. But and I just wanted to point yeah. that out. Yeah, no, no question. And yeah, the, 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 that house was going to be significantly redone. No question. And so now you want all three in that same unit just to start we're going to leave them there without disturbing them they all qualify and as they leave we'll move people over into the into the newer the newer construction or meetable whatever you know what, it was very discriminatory but keeping them all in the same one building it really is well, yeah. i mean there should well, we'll be there should be yeah. some in each building yep. okay. not not in one building that's not a problem We'll spread them out. I, I th the only comment I have on the sidewalk is I do not believe there's a sidewalk along any portion of Cindy Lane at all. So for us to build a sidewalk along our frontage, you're effectively building a sidewalk to nowhere. Maybe to the bus. And I will tell you, and I will tell you after working for over 20 years in the town of Bethel, that we have many sidewalks from nowhere that lead to somewhere now. And I think Bob Lagnard and, and Kitty can vouch for me on that. Eventually, they get connected. <laughs> I've always thought of Bob as the father of sidewalks in Bethel. <laughs> Bob, that would be Bill. Dick Shannon. That, that Dick would Shannon. have been Dick Bob, Shannon. Dick Shannon, sidewalks in green space. Hello. You got it. I agree. Okay. Uh, all right. Beth, are you, is, that, is that all, Beth? Beth, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Okay, how about Bob Legnard? Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, would, uh, on the uh, floor plan, uh, these are slab on grade except for utilities in the basement, is that true? Yeah, there's gonna be a small crawl area in the, uh, the back of the, the unit top where there'll be, you know, will be a crawl space for mechanical equipment. Okay. And these are one story buildings, you say? Correct. Building? Yes. And uh, is there room there to put a sidewalk in with your yeah. plan? Within the right of way, yes, there is, Bob. Yeah. Would, would an easement be the better way to go and, until we decide you're going to sidewalk the whole road? Well, you better, you're better off putting it in the right-of-way. The right-of-way line is about 10 feet back from the edge of the pavement. So uh, if the sidewalk is kept within the right-of-way, then it can stay in the right-of-way on properties okay. either side of us. If you put it on private property here, you're going to need easements from all the other private properties on either side. So it, it's, it's a public improvement. It should be in the right-of-way. Uh, we, right we have plenty of room to do that. Yeah, we ran into that down on Worcester Street right now. We're trying to continue a sidewalk and there's a couple of homeowners are objecting to having a sidewalk in front of their house. Yeah. So this, this can be in the right of way and there is no objection by the owner because it's not on their property. And Beth says that there, there'll be a, a further review of any of the engineering on this thing. Oh yeah. Yes, Bob, I would have to design, you know, I'd have to, do you know redo the stormwater management plan the erosion control plan grading you know all the bells and whistles and then that would be reviewed by i guess your new town engineer uh, that bethel has i mean this is a little different than than uh, dealing with the original plan well it is there's going to be smaller stormwater management systems because i have separate buildings and not a big parking lot uh, so we'll have, you know, smaller systems uh, for each of the uh, units and driveways. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Hi, Paul? 
Um, hey guys, sorry, sorry I was late tonight. tonight. I'll start, start with that. that. I missed the first couple, couple minutes. minutes. Um, the, I, guess I guess my question would be, and it kind of ties into what Ms. Oaks was asking. asking. Um, Steve, yeah. can you, can you hear, hear me? me? There's an yeah, echo. Yeah, there's an echo. You have a, you have echo. a reverb <laughs> effect on your microphone. Can you hear me now? We can still hear you. You, you just have a reverb effect on your microphone. Maybe you can sing with Beth's band. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that any better? No. no. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm doing wrong here. Hold on, let me turn, turn the, the camera, camera off. Oh, oh, I know what it is. is. Hold on just a second. second. Gotcha. Baby on the keyboard. Is that any better? <laughs> I'm sorry? Is that any better? No. no. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the baby to get off the iPhone. <laughs> she's, she's she's sleeping, sleeping soundly. soundly. Well, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, so I'll talk slow and uh, I'll, I'll make, make it short, short and sweet. sweet. Thank you. Um, the, the underground, underground tension system, system would, would that, that be in the same, same location as you've already, already tested, tested, Steve, or do you have to test, test again? Uh, no, it would be in the general vicinity of the test holes. We had several test bits out here. Um, okay. So it would be within those areas. Okay. okay. And then um, I found what I think, I think you were talking about in the Google, Google Drive. Drive. So uh, it, it is a little tough, tough to find, but, but it is online, so I did find it. it. Uh, if, if you call tomorrow and talk to David, he can talk you through it. it. But, but there, there is a little blurb um, on what... Steve found while he was digging out there. So I will just say that. Um, it, it is the lesser of two evils. I still am not a fan of it, but I certainly like this better than the, the two motels. Um, and I would definitely like to see sidewalks installed as part of the project. And I'll leave it at that because I know I um, sound like a robot. Thank you. Paul, thank you for taking care of that and finding that piece for Pat Oaks. I appreciate it. No, no problem. Ken. Um, got a couple comments, one or two questions. Um, as our esteemed attorney mentioned that uh, a compromise no one is going to be happy with. Um, we've come a long way. I wish we had started with uh, some real landscaping and cleanup of the existing building from the beginning. It would have saved us a meeting or two, I think. Um, it's a step in the right direction. And I think the people in Sydney Lane are not gonna be happy no matter what goes in here. And I can't blame them. Um, as far as the speed bumps, they need to go on mass to the Selectman's office and demand them. It's the only way they're going to get put in. And uh, sidewalks, yeah, the whole street needs sidewalks. Also, Sydney Lane residents need to go en masse to the different departments to fix a water problem at the end of the street. One or two people complaining is never going to fix it. And I feel for them, but that's the only way it's going to get fixed down there. And mm -hmm. I realize it has nothing to do with this project. Um, I'm glad the three, three, three unit there is cleaned up. Uh, I think a little bit more landscaping would be going a long way, but we're heading in the right direction. Linda? Okay, yeah, I mean, obviously this is a far cry from the original application. I, I still think it's a little overdeveloped for that. Um, as far as the, the three unit building, uh, landscaping definitely is a, a step in the right direction. Maybe a little bit more landscaping in front of the doors, the, the, the steps there to hide that a bit. Uh, I don't think the shutters improve it. I actually drove past the building before I came here today to take a look at it. And judging by the, the new buildings, um, shutters are not going to be uh, in keeping with the, the three new buildings. So I don't think that's going to improve it. Um, sidewalk, I think it's a definite uh, great idea. Now, as far as the garbage collection, since we are looking at this as all one development, why can't we have the dumpsters 
in back of that three unit building for everybody to use? It would be quite honestly, Steve, Frank's record yeah, very yeah. inconvenient yeah, yeah, for the yeah. guy down here well, to have to come really off the road yeah. and go in here or this guy to come out his driveway and go down and around. Before we had a central driveway with the two major units right on either side of it and it was all parking lot. So it was very easy to walk out your back door to put it in there. But the existing dumpster is here. Each of these, as we all have, we have our garage, our garbage cans in our garage. And on the day of pickup, we bring them either outside the door or to the end of the driveway and they're picked up. That's so what would be done here. 12 containers out there for those buildings. So uh, it's generally seems... you're going to have one for each unit. Well, that they'll have a, but the three unit one, garbage, the three yeah, unit one has a dumpster for the three units. So that's, that's take care say. of that. That's there. 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 But the, the new duplexes, each owner would have, you know, they're a garbage can and, and a recycling. Right. Bin. So that, but they're all picked up one day, you know. That's still 12 done. cans. Well, it's no three. different than any other single family house. In any town. That's, but we're not looking you know, at it at single family well, houses. We're looking at so, it at a complex. Well, uh, but they're all separate like. structures. So. And the other thought, is there any way to combine some of those driveways so it's not five driveways coming out in Cindy Lane? It, it, it really, in looking at these houses, it would have wound up with a lot more impervious area. Um, it would have put, as an example, if I had put parking back where I had it on the original plan, this building now would have come much closer to that road. We were trying to keep some of the units back, not right on Cindy Lane. So that's so we're why really we're trying to make the driveways. More like I mean, Cindy Lane. you know, the backmost one in the southwest corner is really tucked into the back. You know, you see the driveway, but you know, the units back there. Sure. So we didn't, you know, we didn't want to, you know, have the massing issue you know, before, because I could have pulled them closer together, but now you're going to, it's going to may look like this, but you're going to have two of them side by side. It's going to look much bigger. So we did, we tried to stagger them to avoid that massing aspect of it. I'm just looking at like the, the one on the left could be brought into the, the next one. Single curb cut for those two buildings? I mean, I suppose we could. Um, and a wide, yeah, it would be a wider of, entry. It would be a wider entry. You're almost going to wind up with the same amount of pavement. Um, I mean, we can look at that if the concept plan is acceptable to the commission. When we get into the design, we can look at that. So, this is a far cry from what was first presented, and I agree that we've spent a lot of time. That we didn't need to spend. A um, couple of questions. Um, how long have the applicants owned the property? Three years. I think roughly, yes. Three. I'm sorry? About three years. Yeah, About three years. Okay. And do we know why within those three years they did nothing with that? What looks like a hotel. I mean, right now it just looks like a barn, quite frankly. Small why they why they did nothing with that in the past three years? I, I can't answer that. I know they I, rehab one unit inside. Well, I know I that, you, you mentioned out, that outdoors. Was, I don't know. I, I'll answer. answer. I'll, I think, and I haven't had an in depth discussion. My sense of talking with Dave got here is that uh, he saw that he was going to try to do something with the whole project, and he wasn't going to just you know renovate one piece because originally remember that was going to be a, a completely different building two stories down it's going to be two be motels a, yeah, we, we actually, go from a motel to a hotel no, but, I, it, it, but seriously i i think his idea was if i'm going to spend money on this project i'd like to start and finish and not just renovate one building and a follow-up to that yeah. The exterior, forget about the interior, the exterior of that building was horrific for everybody who lived on Cindy Lane. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a torn down tenement is just the best way I can describe it. So I just don't understand why as a landlord, you wouldn't want the people living in your property 
to live with some kind of nice exterior. I don't understand that. Okay, that was my first question. Um, how many tenants live there now? I believe each, I know the one bedroom has one person, I believe. Uh, it's the elderly lady in one of the other two bedroom units. I don't know if there's two people in the other one. Yeah. Okay. And those are all in that three unit. Correct. Same. Right. Yeah. Okay. And how long have they lived there? I, for a while, I think. So I, preceding. Oh yeah. Predating. Yeah. I mean, yeah. also I this. Heard heard them, yeah. I mean, the you know, I started on this project in yeah. early 2020, yeah. which is almost two years. You know, it is two years ago. So right. Dave only owned it a year before we started looking crap. at this okay. concept. So, um, can you just help me understand? And I'm sure I should be seeing it, but I'm not. Where is the parking for that? For uh, the existing thing? building. The driveway comes in. <laughs> the driveway comes in right here, and it's all behind the building. It's a okay. it's a it's a paved area right behind the building. Okay, there so that so, yeah. So that. Thing kind of there, hockey stick yeah, looking that thing. Looks like that for forty years. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I see it. It's like, it's like, like yeah. it's like a tuba. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Tuba, big hockey stick, one or the other. <laughs> I'm a musician. Okay. Is so, hockey a sport? <laughs> um, sorry. Go Mets. Um, you mentioned that you imagine. The different siding. Well, we want to match the existing building to what ultimately gets built on the new units. We don't know what the, this is. Just a generic. This is a you know light gray color. Most exterior exterior colors are, go from you know the beige to an off white to maybe a light blue or to a gray. But we don't know what the exterior is. But it will be complemented to the existing okay. building. Okay. So we don't have a yellow building and all white buildings okay. as an example. Okay, um, I agree with Linda that the um, help me, Linda. What were you talking about? Side of the shutters. Thank you. <laughs> that I think the shutters make it look like a Motel Six. Okay. Well, we can take them off. We, we and I, I honestly have a problem. I don't want things to look like we use the expression. They look like twins. They look like triplets. Things like that. And I don't want everything to be cut from the same cookie cutter. But what I'm looking at it with the proposed plan that may change with the three unit, it looks to me like a Levittown project where they're right on top of each other. And quite frankly, I think it's ugly. I'll be real upfront about it. I think it's ugly. And I don't think it, I don't think I'm gonna be really blunt and gross. Looks like what you're doing, what the applicant is doing. You guys are just following what the applicant is asking you to do and I understand. But right now, based on what it looks like now on the exterior with a landlord that has done nothing to fix up dangerous, property very, very safe. it looks like you're putting lipstick on a pig and i like pigs i i think it's i think it's just it it doesn't do anything with the neighborhood as you drive in it is so obviously different and i think it's going to retain that difference so do i have any other questions or comments oh bleh. And I think that sidewalks are a must. And I will tell you, a sidewalk going nowhere is better than no sidewalk at all. It's a good start. Because again, like on Worcester Street, and there are a bunch of streets in Bethel that you walk down and you know, so down on South Street, for instance, as you're walking down towards the train station, mm -hmm. you've got those um, either condominiums or the rentals that are on the left-hand side. Now walking down, um, towards uh, the, the town dump, the, the dump area. Um, and there's the railroad bridge that goes down there. Oh, um, it's Ricky Plain. Right, that right. is Grassy Plain at that, right. Um, it's, it's on the left and there's a sidewalk, like yeah. out of the blue. 
but it's fine because eventually that may lead to a better way to go for a walk along Grassy Plant Street. So that is all I have. Okay, uh, everybody has pretty much said everything I would like to say. I uh, I feel very strongly about that. That what I call is I, I think somebody bought it had a, had a leftover trailer and threw it on that property. Uh, that's just what it looks like. Uh, and you know, it shutters, you paint it, it, it's going to be what it's going to be. And the problem with the property is, is that I, I believe you're putting so much on that one little piece that I feel sorry for the people on Sandy Lane because they're going to have a problem with all the traffic that's going to come from that one building, from, from that one piece of property. And, and, and I, you know, to, as I said before, to have all of those affordable units in that one building, it, it, it's not right. There should be one there and one at another place and one at another place. Uh, you, were, you were going to move those people before. I, why not when, when you build your, your beautiful things, move those other people into the new building and then, and then renovate what you have left. It, it's just, and the sidewalks, if it's going to be built at all, it's going to have to have sidewalks. And someday they will grow and they'll, they'll become a whole street of sidewalks. Just like Maple Avenue. Just like Maple Just, Maple. just, Maple. just, just exactly. like, yeah, right, Worcester Street. Worcester Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm sorry, but that, that's about all I have to say for this. And I, I don't see any reason to leave this open because do we have to be carrying open for any reason? You can choose to close it down if you so wish. You well, just put the dumpster in there. I mean, you should have you should have a consensus. Oh, I'm not absolutely. So, could we have a consensus from the commission members? Uh, Bob, how do you feel? Leave it open or close it? You're you're muted. muted. <laughs> Can't hear you, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, you're muted. Uh, ah, there you go. We'll close it. Okay. Paul? Um, I, I say, say close, close it. it. Okay. Close. Okay. Linda? Point of information. Sure. Closing it means what? We're done. And then it goes to us. Well, in the you, work session. You, you can choose to start discussing this in a work session tonight. You don't right. have to render a decision tonight. No. Um, but that would begin that deliberation phase of this application. Okay. Yeah. Now, before, we're going to ask you, yeah. now they're talking, uh, Mr. Jenkins was talking about this going back to Wright and Pierce and to other well, areas. That, Kitty, that's after if the commission votes to accept this concept plan, then we will redo the engineering mm -hmm. for you know to address all and of those technical all issues. Let me yeah. just put it. Yeah, let me, you know, Go ahead. Eight thirty G is a little unique insofar oh, as I, I know all most that. times when you get a denial, you go to the superior court. Right. This act allows you to amend right. and have a public hearing on the amendment, but at the same time you have choices. You can reject the amendment completely, in which case we're back to appealing the original application. You can accept the amendment with reasonable conditions of approval. You always have that option. So if I were doing it, if I were going to accept this as the lesser of all evils or two evils or however many evils we're comparing it to, but if we're going to accept it and there were it would obviously be with a condition that Wright Pierce sign off on the, or not, not Wright Pierce, because we have a, a town engineer now, that, that the town engineer sign off on the revised drainage plan engineering that would come out of the smaller project. So that would be a reasonable condition of approval. Uh, other condition of approval, we want one unit uh, in the three families designated as a housing opportunity in two units in the other building designated as housing opportunities. That's a reasonable condition of approval. Mm -hmm. um, it, ex excuse me? 
Go Someone write these down. down I agree with them all. Um, as far as the um, what in, in my opinion, what the commission is doing tonight <clears throat> is accepting the concept plan. It is a concept plan. It's yeah. not a total approved drawing. And as a concept plan, it would be reviewed by other departments in regards to the proposal because it is a major change. Um, and also, Neil, I will let you know too that as far as conditions and stipulations that the commission will review those with me and they, I will then in turn review those with council. Correct. But I'm saying that just so, you know, so people understand, they don't have to say yay or nay tonight in they- No. Yeah. It, it, we're looking it, for a consensus. That's what we're looking for. And otherwise, as I say, if it's rejected, then we just- Then it's rejected and they go, we go to court. Yeah, that's the other option, but- Excuse me, I'm sorry for interrupting. Any, you know, I look forward to that, Beth. It's no, I'm, I'm not in good shape, so my- <laughs> It's not terrible, don't interrupt. So we, we have okay. a consensus to yeah. close this. So that's, yeah, that's yeah. who we are. Yeah. And then so we'll, you can't we'll close this. What? So, so you can close. Right. Close the public hearing, Kitty. Yes, I did. Need a motion? Yeah. No. no, no, no. We don't need a motion to have a consensus. And declare the public <laughs> hearing closed. Good. It's closed. Thank you. Lot of right. room, lot of <laughs> Thank you. Have a happy Fourth of July weekend. Have Thank a good holiday, guys. guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, here we go. Next. We have our business meeting. Okay, and I'm going to see Linda for which tip? Um, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's it. Okay. Uh, we have the minutes of 6 14 22. Has anybody reviewed the minutes? I'd like to hear a motion. Motion to accept. Linda? Okay, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ken. Do we have any invoices? No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I've got no. I'm, no, I'm getting um, my, my voice. No, we do not have invoices. No, but we have to. We have to have okay. Um, oh, can we? For the, for the, for the, we have Linda. Okay. Everybody agree on the minutes. Yes. Hi. Hi. Opposed. Abstain. Oh, one, one abstention. That's right. Right, right because right. I missed. Half of the meeting. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so we have that done. Are there are no invoices. Mm -hmm. We feel like starting a work session tonight without Beth here. I don't think so. I, don't I, don't. I, don't. I, I, I would like her to feel better. And yeah. I would like all of us to be here, don't yeah. you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah. So, what do okay, you hear me, guys? I think we're going to uh, table the work session until we're all here and active and moving and Beth too who want, would like to do that okay um okay wait a minute guys before you sure. go table it I'm sorry okay. I'm having trouble hearing my husband's calling right. the police now oh <laughs> um I've done that a couple of times I feel yes, like we have old to. lady oh Get anyways I'm in the so farthest you... I'm in the deepest darkest closet in the house so you can hear me <laughs> you all right so anyways um you need to come if if you can tonight i think it's important for you to come to a consensus of where you want to go with this so that way there are two weeks to prepare something for you and speak to our council and so on and so forth and i think that for the time being it's either without getting into a lot of the dynamics of the application it's the concept. Are you are you in agreement to go with this concept, or are you not? And and I would be looking for a consensus if you can do that at this point. Right, because the consensus is either this or we go to court. We go to court. Yeah. So one or the other. Got to put up or shut up. We definitely don't want it going back to the original. No. No, we don't. Well, but that, but then what does that mean? I mean, are we going to accept this? Well, it means in principle, not details. I think Beth's saying we can 
alter a lot of little things. Correct. So we can we can make this a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. There, there are reasonable conditions of approval that you could right. Right. make as part of your decision. If you decide if you decide yes. to go in favor of this concept, that's what Neil was trying to explain. Oh. I, I, go ahead. I'm opposed to the concept. So if I'm outvoted on the consensus, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Bob, are you in favor of moving forward with this concept? Or I can't hear you, Bob. I lost my audio. I don't know what happened there. Now you're back. Okay, I'm in favor of going with the concept. In favor of moving forward. Moving forward. Okay. Paul? Yeah, move backwards. Mr. Shanley? Uh, I am in favor of the concept with some future adjustments. Okay. Same here. I'm in favor with some adjustments. Linda? In favor with. I'm having trouble hearing it. Okay. What's well, the matter? What? I, I think she maybe tried to. Oh, I can't hear. I can't hear. We're we're here, Beth. Can you hear us? Beth, can you hear us? Beth's in the Hello. Net. Yes, Beth. We're here, Beth. It's, okay, I'm having a lot of trouble hearing you. Um, <laughs> you can hear why? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Chuck is trying to get through to the police. I, I mean, it's just yeah. crazy. I'm sorry. So when you when you all finish your discussion, I can listen to it online. But if we okay. could, I think the consensus just, that we're having is that we're going to move forward with the present concept. Okay. Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't mean great, but I mean you're coming yeah. to a consensus. That's what right. I'm. That's our consensus. Yes. So it's. One, two, three, four, five to one. Right. Thank so, you. So, so staff will have something drafted for right. the next meeting okay. right. for you to make a vote. Okay. Yeah, considering everything we were talking about. Okay. And what, one of the things I didn't like was him talking about what they may do with that building. No, I want something. I want it in writing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want yeah. a picture. We were I waiting. Want it. Yeah. Go ahead, Bob. We're waiting for discussion till the. Uh... Doug is back and yeah, exactly. And then, uh, um, as David just said, being that we're going to be moving forward with the present concept, they'll be working on bringing something forward in two weeks to show us. Right. And then we'll work on it. Okay. Look at that gorgeous baby. Oh, oh little gorgeous baby. <laughs> are, are there? Are there? Okay. Any... I'm sorry, guys. Um. <laughs> In regards to that, the the point is that we have till July twelfth. Right. You've made. You've said that you want that you're in agreement with um, potentially the concept itself. It does right. not mean that the um, plans will be totally done by July twelfth. Oh no. Or reviewed by July twelfth. Um, we it, all we're going to be doing is. Um, uh, a, an amendment to the stipulated, um, not to the stipulated, I apologize. Um, it, we're just gonna be putting in writing the suggested stipulations of approval. Okay. And then so, you'll have further review after that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So that's part of that work session. Uh, new business here. Nope. Planner's report? I don't think so. No. Commission comments? Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, seriously. And if you have anything you want to add, please do. No. Public comment? Hello, public. <laughs> okay. AJ Liberty, 8 Grand Street, Bethel. Yes. Um, so the POCD plan. Yes. When we developed that, right. um, I remember there was a discussion um, when we compared Wallingford, Guilford, and you know came up with that. Right. And one of the things that Wallingford did 
was they had set um, evaluation meetings. So quarterly. Oh, to see how they that. had representatives of all the different, you know, the uh, Board of Ed, PNC, PUC, you know, they all came together quarterly to look over the plan to see what what updates, you know, what had been, huh. what progress had been made, what challenges that they had. And every two years, they actually did a report to the public. Oh, so my question to you guys is, and I know that we've had two years of COVID, but as I look over some of the things that are in here, for instance, um, it talks about just for the TNZ to uh, just continue to require 20% affordable housing in the TOP. But then if you have more than the minimum, you get certain perks. So have you have we looked at that? Have you looked at that? Um, then another thing was universal design that one of your goals is to incorporate universal design techniques into 50% of future affordable housing units. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here that you forget that you wrote it, you know, that it's in the plan, unless you actively sit down and review the plan. So I'm suggesting that periodically, not often as Wallingford, but periodically you sit down and, you know, with your cohorts and look at the, the perks that you're referring to, BJ and the POCD, what page are, is that on? Um, uh, it was page 86. Okay. Hmm. In, regards, in regards to P, BJ's comments, she is very um, thorough. Um, and historically has always said that even when we were doing, going through the POCG process, it's a good reminder that we need to do this. Thanks, BJ. No, it is. Looks like somebody has a hand Yes. Up. Uh, it looks like uh, P. Antolini has their hand raised. On Paula the Antolini. Okay, Paula, yes, hello. Hi, I'm the address. Yes. Do you need my address? Yes, uh, Jacob Lane, Bethel, Connecticut. I think Thank my you. comment is going to be similar in that I was going to ask if you have any guidelines for design and other aspects of these A30G projects. I've, I've attended a lot of these A30G meetings, <laughs> and it seems like the same aspects always come up. So either, uh, I don't know if you have guidelines, you have obviously some legal guidelines, but I'm wondering if you could uh, meet and make some basic, maybe design guidelines. And uh, I, I know that um, you like green space and things like that. These are suggestions. You're not demanding that the uh, applicant do this, but possibly sure before they design. Here. I'm sorry. Hello. Hello. Something else. Go, go ahead, Paula. Something else okay. is going on. Um, go ahead. I'm just saying um, before. Uh, the uh, applicant has a designer make the project. Uh, he could have in, in hand some suggestions of what you look for, uh, even as far as what the building looks like. In other words, someone, I don't know who said it looks like a barn, but maybe not a flat building and you want it to look like maybe several buildings together, even though it is one and things like that. So they know because it, it's obvious that this building isn't satisfactory yet. And so they have to go back to the drawing board. It's just a thought. No, it's a good one. Thank you. Okay. That's a good thought. Thank you. And we'll, we'll, we'll you know, I think going with uh, BJ's. Uh, I have I, to, excuse me, guys. I have to say good night. Go ahead. Feel better. Feel better. I'll yes. talk to you all. All right. Day. Good night. David, you'll turn off the meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it might not be a bad idea to, to form it at night where we could get together and go over these things. 
I think that's an excellent idea. Right, guys? We all like more meetings. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. Just try to, with, with, you know, maybe with a little. Absolutely. We could come in our jammies. <laughs> I live I live for more meetings. Um, if we're in commission comments. Yes. Great. Okay. I nominate. Hold on. Oh, what's her name? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Elena, seriously, Paul? That's my kid's name. Is it really? Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. I nominate Elena Josephine Shanley as a permanent member, <laughs> junior style of Bethel Planning and Zoning Commission. There we go. Oh. Oh. Second. There we go. Okay, can we have a, can we have a vote, please? Oh, all in favor? All in favor. Oh, Paul, we got her. And you are dad of the year. more dad of the year. Well, <laughs> that, that's part of the course, you know. Well, that ought to be good for her college tuition out of penny. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I already really did three of them. Family. All in private colleges. <laughs> I'm not doing any more of those. Then they have done that. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> I can uh, see she's, she's pretty good. good. We're pretty, pretty good. We're blessed. Oh, God, bless. Thank you. That's great. Okay. So, motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Aye.